Well, I'm your Venus, I'm your fire, your desire. Yeah, okay, I'm not going to sing anymore, <laughs> but I love that song. Uh, anyway, uh, today we're going to be taking a look at why Venus is a beautiful thin crescent in the evening sky and why it's only going to be there for another couple of days. And yeah, just so you know, we're currently on that little spot there, that little speck called Earth, um, where today uh, Elon Musk's uh, new launch has just been cancelled, which is a bit of a shame. But I mean, honestly, for me, it's kind of like a, I don't want to sound too much like a Philadelphia, but it's like a, yeah. Uh, what this is basically reinventing the command module the uh, yeah uh, th this is like one step behind where the space shuttle was the only difference is that elon musk is doing it and uh, i uh, the boosters look good when they land um but seriously beyond that <laughs> oh, what what is actually new there anyway so we're not going to be looking at what's happening on Earth today because it's a long way away. Uh, the program I'm using here, by the way, is called Celestia, and it, um, you know, it's a sort of real-time simulation of the solar system where I can scroll time forwards and backwards, and I can go for a tour around the solar system. So I can go take a look at Jupiter and you know where the various moons are. Or I can let's, let's take a whisk over to Saturn. Because Saturn's always, always pretty and a long way away. So, right, so, and when you get out to Saturn, it's a long way back home. So let's go all the way back to Venus. And the reason we're at Venus today is it took me back. It really did. Um, I posted a picture of Venus as this beautiful thin crescent. Uh, in, well, um, in the evening sky uh, to a WhatsApp group. And to my great surprise, quite a lot of people didn't understand. They thought it was just a really crappy picture of the moon. And they didn't understand why Venus looked like this. Um, so I'm going to go over why Venus is this beautiful thin crescent in the sky at the moment and why it's only going to be there for another two or three days that's that's all you got tops um so uh obviously um when the sun is behind you the planet looks full when you're at 90 degrees it looks about half and when you're all the way over here it's um yeah it's completely black so let's go to earth and take a look at what's happening on earth at the moment what on earth? Okay, so um, the Earth, you got to bear in mind, if you look at it from the top, spins counterclockwise. So it spins this way around, which means that, you know, this is coming up for sunset. This here is actually sunset. So that's the point where the sun goes below the horizon. So let's uh, turn around and take a look at sunset. So, sunset is, if you're on the equator, is just about there. So, let's zoom in. Uh, too much. There we go. Um, and I think I can actually probably zoom right in on sunset. And you can just, well, you see the atmosphere. The atmosphere is tiny on Earth. Um, you know, <laughs> barely there at all. Uh, so, um, the reason that Venus um, looks like a really thin crescent, you'll you'll see if I zoom in on it. Uh, let's see if we can zoom all the way in on Venus. Oh no, 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 no. Okay, cursor keys for navigation. There we go. So I have to zoom in a long way, but you do, at that point, get Venus as this amazing little thin crescent. There you go. Um, 
So about what you see in a telescope at the moment, it's much brighter than this. It really is uh, super bright at the moment. Uh, but uh, as the Earth spins, let me zoom all the way out here. All the way out. Boom. So as the Earth rotates, first of all, you get sunset. And very shortly afterwards, uh, as so you're going around, Venus goes down. And over the next few days, I'm going to see if I can actually animate this a bit for you. So I'm going to work out, where's my time, time rate? That oh, looks fairly hopeful. Time rate times 100, times 1,000, times 10,000. So you can see that Venus is moving around the sun on the inside. And once it goes there... It's gone in the evening sky. So let me see. If, let, let me pause time for the moment, and that means that Venus is gone from the evening sky, and uh, see so if we can whisk around to the morning sky. All right. So you start here. This is sunset. Then you go all the way across the. This is night time. And then this is sunrise here. And that's that's Venus on June the 4th, which is in about a week's time. So it is the date, by the way, if, you, if you're interested. So I'm going to um, scroll the clock back a little. Uh, let's send time back a bit. Uh, that one, sending time back. No, backwards. There we go. Oh, too much. Uh, okay, that's about right. So what are we at? July the 1st. This is three days time. Yeah, I mean, this is getting to the point where it's lost in the solar glare. Uh with a telescope, you'll be able to pick it out quite easily. Uh, by the way, Mercury is fantastic at the moment. Uh, Mercury is another one of these things that is typically so close to the sun that it's it's really difficult to spot. So that's, this is probably getting on for more what you'll actually see. Um, yeah, so Mercury is, is much higher in the sky, but Venus is is bright it's it's hugely bright uh, mercury is more like a bright star and mercury is always kind of depressing in a telescope because first of all it's never far from uh sunset and that means that it's always low in the sky it's always got a lot of shimmer on it and it's quite small uh in fact let me just see if i can scroll the clock back to today Time is paused, resume, backwards. Oh, too much. Uh, what are we at? 27. That's about right. There we go. Good. Now, the reason I've done this is because at the moment, you've got Venus, who's a beautiful little crescent there. But if I scroll around and about up here somewhere, Where's the moon? Might have uh, zoomed out a bit much there. So all the planets basically orbit in a plane. So that means that the moon I can't find the moon. That's not right. The moon is deceptively small. It's going to be about the same size as the sun. So there, there she blows. Okay. So that's what the moon looks like at the moment. And yeah. So at the moment, they, uh, there's an awful lot of planet activity. Or yeah, you've got the moon and. Mercury and Venus all in the evening sky. 
So another way that we can look at this is I'm going to put the planetary orbits on. So I need to go to view options and we're going to put on the orbits. Uh, um, orbits, orbits. Oh, but that looks hopeful. There we go. Super. Right. And the reason that we're doing that is such that. Um, OK, we're going to go to the sun. Uh, put your asbestos underwear on for a second. But the reason we're doing that is so we can go out of the plane of the ecliptic and take a look at it from a, a somewhat different perspective, uh, which is more like this. There you go. So you can see that uh, Venus is about to go between us and the Sun, uh, which is called an inferior conjunction. And that's when it's... So what, what's been happening over the past um, six months is Venus has been getting much, much closer to us. And as it does so, it apparently moves much quicker in the sky, which is why this part where... Uh, Venus is really close to the Earth, is where it angularly moves the fastest in the sky. So at the moment, it's it's very close to us, obviously, so it appears big, angularly big. Um, whereas if it's on the other side of the on the other side of its orbit here, the Earth's here and Venus is here. Venus appears tiny, but the interesting thing is how bright it is in the sky remains pretty constant. So here it's like a full moon when you look at Venus. Uh, I'll, I'll show you this in a second. So um, when Venus is over here, it's a full moon. When Earth is here and Venus is here, it looks like a half moon. And when Venus is here, it's a, this really thin crescent. And obviously, when it goes between us and the sun, it's sort of the equivalent of an eclipse. But uh, Venus typically doesn't go across the the disk of the sun it goes slightly up or slightly down because all these all these planes aren't quite in the in a line um and it's not going to venus isn't going to go between us and the sun for i think it's another 100 or so years anyway so what i'm going to do is i'm going to scroll the clock back backwards backwards there we go and um Actually, we'll, we'll see when, when Venus was at quadrature and all that sort of thing. So this is approximately, where Earth is in its orbit is, of course, the time of year. So we're sort of almost summertime now. So this is February. Yeah, January is about right. January to summer, that sort of thing. So about Christmas time, Venus was, you know, uh, almost as high as it's going to get in the sky and it would have appeared like a half moon but it's tiny right so just compare the distance it's uh, whatever that distance and you compare the distance it's at now and it's whatever eight times closer now than it is when it's it's here which is a call a quadrature and now we're going to scroll the clock back even further to the point where the Earth and Venus were on opposite sides of the Sun, which is about now. Um, and at this point, uh, Venus looks like a full moon. Um, and how far back are we? Uh, we're, we're back. Oh, yeah, September of last year. So it's taken about a year and a half to get from there to catch up with us it'll take another year and a half till it, it gets back here again so what we're going to do now is we're going to go to earth uh, go and what you'll find is venus is again there's venus just there so angularly it's about in the same place as it was previously which is it's in the evening sky but I'm going to play the same trick that I did earlier. I'm going to try and zoom in on it. And I'm not so sure there's going to be another zoom on this. So 
but you'll see that it's absolutely tiny. And it looks like a full moon. It's not a giant crescent anymore. Yeah. There you go. Full full Venus. Um so Venus is at its least dramatic, uh, like that, because it's just angularly small and you can't really see anything on the face of it anyway. However, you scroll the clock forwards, um Yeah, let's let's zoom all the way out. And let's scroll the clock forwards. No. Right. Okay, we're scrolling the clock. Going the wrong way in time. There we go, forwards. So what's the time here? We're up into 2020 about now. Okay. Oh, no, it's 2019. We've got another year to go. Oh, Tim, yeah, 2020. Twenty twenty, January, February. February. March. April. May. Okay, about now. There we go. Perfect. And so now we're back to present times. And there's Venus. Okay, we need another few days on this, but I strongly suspect that my reflexes aren't up to this. Okay, that was Venus and Mercury changing places. 25th, 27th, there we go. And so we're back to current day. Oops, I'll do that. And we want to zoom in. Yeah, and it's it's huge by comparison. Um, yeah, so basically, you're going to get Venus. Uh, you're going to get Venus um, being good in the evening sky for another couple of days, tops. Um, right. Uh, yeah, if, if that's one unit, then when it's on the other side of the sun, it's eight or something. Anyway, so this is Venus good in the evening sky. Then you can't see it for a bit. Then it's good in the morning sky for a bit. And it very rapidly shrinks. It very rapidly shrinks because, you know, going from here to here, it almost doubles how far away from us it is. And then it takes another three years to basically go all the way around and catch Earth up again. Uh, so let's see if we can actually... Venus is this sort of three... I think it's a three to two resonance for the Venus and the Earth. Um, there we go. Perfect. So uh, Venus is... 2021, it's more or less on opposite sides. Uh, and catching us up almost at 2022. So it'll be 2022, um, yeah, before this happens again. So um, I thought I would pass that on. Um, if you found that useful um, uh, to feel the pulse of the solar system, then give us a thumbs up. Maybe consider subscribing on Patreon, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.